having a scientific background in peak performance and the science of happiness, this is infuriating! The law of attraction is almost ubiquitous with self-help culture. And since the book The Secret came out a couple years ago, it got a lot of traction with people like Oprah and Jack Canfield, you know, the chicken soup for the soul guy. And somehow it's become this base of religiosity in the realm of self-help. To quickly explain, the law of attraction is a supposed natural law of the universe that says that like attracts like. If you think positively, positive things will come back to you. You know, like karma. Yeah, this shit ain't new. But in recent history, this law of attraction, it's given some sort of metaphysical explanation that if you believe something hard enough and imagine it enough, it'll become true. The universe is gonna reward you with something that you want. And you know, even the popular author, Jack Canfield, is quoted in The Secret as saying, our job is not to figure out how to get what you want. Just, you know, think, and then trust that the universe will find a way to manifest it. The universe! Yeah, you know, you're gonna send out brain waves into the universe, and then it's gonna come back to you in the form of a brand new car. Okay, so trying to understand what's actually going on with the law of attraction, I looked up the science that explains all the benefits that it supposedly provides. Here is what I found. The law of attraction isn't a law of nature. I can already see somebody stopped rubbing their crystals and is angry as fuck. The law of attraction isn't a law of nature. It's a law of human nature. There's something that's going on with the law of attraction in three ways. All right, so it's been a while since I've really read much on the law of attraction or even seen the secret, but I do hear about it a lot. And one of the big focuses on the law of attraction is that you have to visualize. You gotta visualize your future. I even think in the movie adaptation in the of The Secret, there was an exercise where you have to visualize being in your dream car while sitting in your lazy boy and going for a visualized drive in that awesome dream car. Okay, so visualization is actually a skill that peak performance coaches use to motivate and teach the people that they're coaching. So there's two ways that visualization actually works. One is that it motivates you, it, it helps you build a picture of what that future is gonna be like and you start thinking long term. You start thinking in terms of mastery, in terms of long term goals, and in terms of where you want to be to bridge that gap to where you are. The motivational aspect is pretty obvious. I don't really have to go into the science behind that. But one thing that visualization also does, it helps build skills. So there's been a lot of study over the years about visualization and how it affects your skill development. And the base of it actually comes from this study from 1964 in the British Journal of Educational Psychology. Citation! Where they took three groups, one control and two test groups, and they had them shoot free throws. So they did a pre-test and a post-test. In the pre-test, they had them shoot like, you know, something like 10, 20 free throws. After that pre-test, the control group did nothing for a couple weeks. And then there was a physical practice group. The physical practice group actually practiced shooting free throws for a certain amount of time a week. And the mental imagery group was told to sit down and imagine themselves shooting the perfect three throw, free throw and watching it go into the basket perfectly every time. Then they did a post test where they did f actual free throws. This was a couple of weeks later. And here are the results. The physical practice group did the best, but the mental imagery group almost did as good as the physical practice group. And, of course, they had the control. They did much shittier than both the imagery and the physical practice groups. So it showed that mental imagery and visualization is able to actually help you develop those neural pathways for skills. And there's been a load of study around this uh, over the years. And it shows that there are mirror neurons and other biological processes that help us learn without actually doing the skill. And that's how the law of attraction works with visualization. The next way that the law of attraction affects us is that it creates this performance approach mindset where when you're thinking about always going towards that goal, when you're constantly putting your mind to that goal that you have, 
it creates this mindset that you're approaching your performance, you're approaching that goal, and you put in more effort. A research example of this is in 1996, citation here, from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, they found that people who were goal-oriented towards trying to achieve something were much more motivated and put much more effort into the task that they had to do than people who were motivated to just do the bare minimum. This is called performance approach versus performance avoidance. You got the carrot and the stick. If you're visualizing an ideal future, that's your carrot versus visualizing not having a shitty future, that's your stick. It's better to have the carrot than the stick. That's why when you keep constantly bringing up your goals and positivity and thinking about what you want, you're gonna end up putting more effort into getting what you want. Okay, so the law of attraction works? Fuck. Sure, there are a couple things that work about the law of attraction, but here's something that explains that supernatural part to it and kind of ties it together to the cultish religiosity in self-help culture around the law of attraction. That's confirmation bias. When we're focused on believing that a specific result is gonna happen, we become blind to any evidence that suggests otherwise. And not only that, in one way, we also seek out confirming environments. We keep away from the people who are gonna put us down for believing what we believe. We aren't, we're only gonna watch YouTube videos or listen to uh, podcasts that are gonna confirm an ideal that we already agree with. Confirmation bias regarding seeking out confirming environments was first studied in the 1970s. Citation! In which there was an experiment that participants were supposed to create a hypothesis about something and then test it using different experiments. It was kind of like a multiple choice test. The options were either do an experiment that confirms your hypothesis or an experiment that could challenge your hypothesis and could prove that hypothesis wrong, which is what science should be all about. This study showed that people tend to create environments that confirm our beliefs because most people chose not to challenge their own hypotheses. And that's applied to the rest of life. We start with our beliefs and create actions around them. And those actions then turn into results. For instance, if I believe that the universe is gonna bring me wealth based on my thoughts, and I've been practicing my visualization, and that's all I've been thinking about, when I stumble upon a dollar bill on the ground, I'm gonna be like, oh my God, the law of attraction totally works. But I'm gonna forget about the dollar bill that I misplaced. For so long, it was such a mystery to me as to why people were so religious about the law of attraction and so cult-like. I found one more piece of evidence that's regarding confirmation bias. And it comes from a 1993 study in accounting where they looked for confirmation bias with auditors. Citation. In this study, they found that mindset was really important when it comes to confirmation bias and resistance to it. They found that people who believe in a lack of personal control over their outcomes, an external locus of control, were more likely to be susceptible to confirmation bias. This could be translated into the idea of God's plan, the universe coming back to you. This could be translated into believing your coach because they know what's best for you. Now, confirmation bias isn't necessarily bad, but this explains why so many people are so religious about the law of attraction. They're susceptible to confirmation bias and thus discount any information that disproves what they believe, i.e. scientific evidence. Jack Hanfield was quoted as saying, our job is not to figure out how, the universe will figure out how to manifest it. You just think and the universe manifests it. Well, sounds like you need to drink your own chicken soup, Jack Canfield, because multiple products on your website are all about planning and action. Even some of the biggest proponents of the law of attraction, e.g. Oprah Winfrey, also say that you not only have to believe, but you have to put in the work. And this is where, this is where combating confirmation bias comes in. You can't just believe. It's freaking great if you believe, but you also have to put in the work. If you believe in the law of attraction, then go ahead, keep believing in the law of attraction. But in the words of Oprah Winfrey, I think the mistake that they made with The Secret is that they let it be the answer to all questions. It's very true that the way you think creates reality for yourself. There are other factors going on, so it's not everything, but you can really change your reality based on the way you think. Obviously, I'll be talking more about changing your reality with peak performance in the future, 
If you like this video, give me a like, share it with your friends. If you don't like this video, please leave a comment telling me you hated it. More shedding some light on the bullshit in the future. Thanks for watching. Peace out.